At the time of making this video, it's been 7 years since the release of 13 Reasons Why, and 4 years since the show ended. In commemoration, I wanted to discuss the legacy the show left behind. I think there's been enough time and research done to accurately determine how well the show's portrayal of mental health was. This is part 2 of a 2 video series. I give my full review of the show in part 1, so I highly recommend watching that as well so you can know my full subjective thoughts on the show. Now, this won't be your typical video completely trashing on the show and its negative effects. There's plenty of people who've already done that. As I explain later, I do think there have been some positive things the show has done. This review will try to look at the legacy of 13 Reasons Why from a holistic view. Of course, I will be talking in depth about a lot of mental health related issues, specifically suicide. So if you are going through a hard time, or if anything related to that topic will be triggering, this video is probably not for you. I've put a link below for some resources if you need them. So a big criticism the show has faced is that it led to a higher rate of suicide upon release. The statistic everyone pointed to said there was a 28.9% increase in suicide among youth ages 10 to 17 one month after the show dropped on Netflix. This phenomenon is called the Werther effect, more commonly referred to as a copycat suicide, either due to a romanticized portrayal or simply a person who is already experiencing suicidal tendencies, one will be triggered into copying the original victim. In this case, visibly seeing Hannah end her life will also convince those particularly vulnerable into copying her. The opposite effect is called the Papageno effect. Seeing a positive portrayal of mental health will lead someone to seek help. In this case, seeing what Hannah went through and everyone's reactions after her death might not only lead someone to seeking help, but in turn bring awareness to those who might not know how to deal with these issues. But this is really where things get complicated because an accurate portrayal of mental health might bring awareness to the issue but it could harm those vulnerable to said issues. Likewise, sugarcoating or tying a neat bow on a story might be safer for those suffering from mental illness, but it doesn't do a good job of informing those unaware of its issues. So we really have two groups here. I'll let Tim from Hello Future Me describe it. The challenge with writing characters who struggle with a mental illness or who end their lives is that even though the author might feel that they are writing for one audience, they are inevitably writing for two. The audience unaware of or unaffected by X, say suicidality and self-harm, and the audience aware of and affected by X. And that makes things complicated. He goes in depth on a lot of other examples in media, and really the point of his video is to talk about the risks of portraying mental health in media. What I want to do is specifically look at the aftermath of 13 Reasons Why and what it did for mental health awareness as a whole. Now, I do have to make a small discretion. As I mentioned in my other video, I do have a more positive experience with the show, as it introduced me to a lot of mental health related issues. In my opinion, the show did a good job teaching me about different issues related to mental health, and it's actually encouraged me to research it further. There are several people I know who were in some really dark times, and the show had given me the tools necessary to guide them to a better place. It's hard for me to completely dunk on this show when it did help me provide support for those who needed it. So I was and am part of that first category, the unaware and unaffected. But that's just my personal experience. That doesn't mean the show did well overall. I've tried to divide my personal feelings of the show with the cold facts. Did 13 Reasons Why do a good job with portraying and raising awareness for mental health? The answer is complicated. I've divided this into a few sections. The first one is the response from category one, the unaware. Did the show help educate those who haven't experienced these issues before and did it give them the tools to help people? The second one is the response from category two, the affected. Did 13 reasons why negatively affect those who deal with mental health issues such as depression, i.e. the Werther effect? Of course, the point of this video is for you to come to your own conclusion based on what I've said, though I'll give my personal opinion on all this at the end. 
Now, the main study I'll be looking at is from the National Institute for Mental Health, which essentially went through a ton of previous research about the show and made its own conclusions based on all the combined data. I'll link that study in the description below. I've also talked to some peers of mine about their thoughts on the show. It isn't anything too statistical and really more anecdotal, but I think it helps paint a picture on the show. Category 1. The Unaware There is evidence to suggest the show had a positive impact with those in this category. The main study I referenced had this to say. Several authors described positive outcomes after watching the series. Some of the items that were noted after 13 Reasons Why Exposure were better understanding of depression slash suicide, positive behavioral changes, and increased suicide knowledge and knowledge stigma reduction. The series appeared to increase the likelihood to have conversations with parents about suicide and to seek information on the matter. Parents also reported better understanding of the topic, more comfort at discussing it, and a greater likelihood of prompting conversation. The number of viewed episodes were positively correlated with perceived norms about mental health that, in the end, were related to changes in pro-social mental health behaviors. A couple of my friends who watched the show and didn't have any mental health concerns had similar experiences. In short, they believe the show taught them about the effects mental health can have on a person, and it helped them understand the signs of growing through mental crises. I also saw some of this sentiment on the 13 Reasons Why subreddit. Yeah, I know, Reddit probably isn't the best source for all of this, but I think it's interesting to see what fans of the show said. One person said, I identified more than I wanted to initially admit with Hannah's character. This show helped me with some acceptance around my sensitive nature and confirmed how important it was for me to let a clay into my life. This show helped me appreciate how far I've come emotionally in the past decade and how profound the choices we make about self-love and accepting the right love really are. Another person wrote, As someone with a history of depression and suicidal thoughts, parts of this show were tough to watch, but honestly the toughest thing for me was watching Clay, Alex, and Hannah's parents deal with their grief. Grief after suicide is not often discussed on TV. It felt like such a relief to see a portrayal that felt so real on screen and didn't gloss over any of it. Cathartic in a way, almost. I'm really glad I watched it and I'm really, really glad it started such a conversation about mental health and suicide. Lastly, someone else said, Although this show has triggered me quite severely, it has made me realize I need to stop letting my anxiety and depression overrule my life. I've never been the most sociable person, so I'm not forcing myself to become one, but I've decided to stop worrying and live a little. Now, obviously this isn't hard data, but I think it's important to look at testimonies like this to see what things the show got right, rather than giving a blanket statement saying the show was completely horrible in every way. Conversely, it's important for us to understand where the show went wrong. In contrast to all this, the National Institute study said this. Suggesting a Papageno effect, some publications report pro-mental health outcomes such as stigma reduction or better understanding of depression and suicide but some of these effects seem quite unspecific and hardly attributable to the series. Likewise, the fact that 13 Reasons Why received generally favorable reviews from audiences and critics consequently may have caused the underestimation of its negative effects and the overestimation of the detection of positive reactions. Essentially, just because a lot of people liked it doesn't mean it actually did any good. People could have underestimated the show's effects simply because they liked the show. I mean, we see this kind of trend affect movies that objectively might not be that great. I'm looking at you, Endgame. This all leads me to Category 2, The Affected. Earlier, I mentioned a study suggesting an increase in suicide rates after the show was released. It was conducted by the Journal of the American Academy of Child and Adolescent Psychiatry. <sighs> Sorry, that was long. Anyways. They reported that the release of 13 Reasons Why was associated with a 28.9% step increase in the April 2017 suicide rate, specifically from men. They also touch upon the promotional material for the show, which they believe contributed to the Werther effect. Now, it should be noted that the study does seem to have a bias on the show even being created. The media always tends to blow things up just for clicks and views too. So at first glance, I was tempted to ignore this statistic, 
especially since this was just one study. But there is more evidence to suggest the show did cause deaths. The National Institute concluded, in general terms, objective sources support the presence of a Werther effect following the release of 13 Reasons Why. Regarding suicide mortality, most authors report an increase in the number of suicides completed by adolescents after the series release. And one of them also describes an increase in deaths by suicide in the group of young adults. This higher repercussion among teenagers is in line with the Werther effect hypothesis, especially considering Hannah Baker's age and the audience for whom the show was intended. So yeah, the show did actually cause harm, especially among those who were already vulnerable. I mean, a quick Google search will show how many people copied the tape system Hannah created within the show. One person I know experienced extreme trauma from 13 Reasons Why. They had suicidal thoughts and at some point they came upon Hannah's death online. Seeing this scene made them freeze. Like other testimonies I've heard, they asked, if Hannah could do it, why couldn't I? I'd argue the biggest problem with this show was its promotion. The show was marketed toward teens, especially since the creators claimed it was an accurate portrayal of high school. Also, when the show was released, there were no trigger warnings or resources shown within the episodes. I know trigger warnings can be kind of cringe sometimes, but here it's actually important. Because as we've seen, showing step by step what Hannah did quite literally triggered people to ending their lives. The show put triggers and even edited Hannah's death out later, but by then, the damage was already done. Medical experts such as Dan Reidenberg told Netflix not to air the show specifically because of Hannah's death scene. He feared it would lead to a Werther effect, but for whatever reason, Netflix decided against their advice. Regardless of any positive things the show did, this is pretty terrible because people have died since Netflix was too arrogant believing they knew better than health experts. Sound familiar? Some of the research the National Institute study references indicates that the show's promotion alone did quite a bit of damage considering there was a lot of talk about suicide. So I'd argue the promotion and initial release of the show was not good. Ironically, I think the biggest issue with the show wasn't necessarily the show itself, but how it was promoted incorrectly. Another part of the problem is that the show makes a lot of things graphic or outlandish for the sake of creating drama. Again, the show promoted itself as portraying a realistic depiction of what teens go through. But for the sake of keeping viewers engaged, things are often overblown. I mean, seemingly everyone except Clay led a harassment campaign on Hannah for over a year, and the jocks seem to run the school like they're a mafia, while the teachers and parents look pretty dumb in comparison. And of course, Hannah's journey is way too oversimplified. This is where the romanticization argument comes in. Now, to be honest, I never felt the show romanticized suicide, I mean, seeing everyone's reactions to Hannah's death solidified to me that this was bad. But of course, I'm in category 1, the unaffected. The way the show was framed almost gave a get out of jail free card to those who are vulnerable. What do I mean by this? Well, I alluded to it earlier, but an article from the Harvard Political Review says it nicely. The show is, at its most basic, a glamorized revenge fantasy. Unlike in Suicide in Real Life, Hannah Baker continues to find herself present after death, playing out in the imaginations of the show's other characters, seeing her ploy for revenge transpire. She gets a twisted feeling of justice she couldn't see come to fruition while alive. Such a portrayal romanticizes suicide rather than educating viewers or fostering conversations of it. Unintentionally, the writers of the show perpetuate the narrative that Hannah's death solved her problems. It illustrated that suicide was an adequate way of getting the attention and care she didn't previously receive from her friends and school's administration. And it's hard for me to disagree, especially when there's empirical evidence showing people died because of the show. Sure, the tape system provides for a really good story, but it glamorizes an already bad situation for those who have suicidal ideation. That's not good. The channel Alex Meyer says something similar when it comes to the other characters in the show. 
But I guess my biggest issue, and what I think is the biggest problem with 13 Reasons Why Season 3 in particular, but really any show like this, is by its very nature, it glorifies or glamorizes the idea of going through a traumatic experience. Now, it doesn't do this directly, but... What becomes very apparent in this season is the only thing interesting about most of these kids is how flawed and messed up their lives are. Everyone is defined by the worst thing that happened to them. So once you remove their various traumas or issues or addictions or whatever, there's almost nothing left to care about. And so the whole show has this, I assume, unintentional theme that having these heavy issues and going through these kinds of experiences is the only way to be an interesting person or going through these things isn't that big of a deal because everything turns out okay in the end anyway. Now, I'm not saying that those experiences don't have value because they most certainly do and they're very real issues for a lot of people but just speaking of the show itself 13 reasons why it seems like almost every time we meet someone who's actually interesting by their own merits they just kind of end up being a side character who only shows up for a brief moment like jeff atkins in season one or charlie st george from season three and i think this particular viewpoint is quite dangerous i mean everyone in my generation claims to have adhd or tourette's which kind of minimizes it for those who actually do suffer from that. It's hard for me to say the creators had malicious intent making this show. Based off of what I experienced, the show always seemed to try portraying the effects mental health can have on someone, and how people can reach out to those who are vulnerable. But intent is very different than impact, and the show really dropped the ball with a lot of things. Now I do want to point out what the National Institute said in regard to all this. The increase in suicidal ideation that has been associated with the show was not homogenous across studies and varied depending on individual factors. Higher identification with the main character, real life suicide exposure, having a previous history of suicidal thoughts, watching only some of the episodes of the series rather than the whole season, and watching 13 Reasons Why during a suicide cluster were positively correlated with suicidal ideation. However, two studies found no differences in suicidal ideation before and after watching the show, and another one even reported a protective effect. In the case of self-reported suicide attempts committed after 13 Reasons Why exposure, no significant association was reported. So it's basically saying that in most cases, identifying with Hannah or having a history of suicide exposure are really the key components to being hurt by the show. Your quote unquote everyday person has a much lower chance of suicidal ideation, if at all, than if you have already experienced it in some way before. I think it's also important to note that seeing only specific portions of the show, rather than going through a whole season, was one of the triggering factors. This is supported by another study which concluded, In support of predictions, viewers who stopped watching the second season exhibited greater suicide risk and less optimism about the future than those who continued to the end. However, unexpectedly, current students who watched the entire second season reported declines in suicide ideation and self-harm relative to those who did not watch the show at all. Moreover, those who watched the entire second season were also more likely to express interest in helping a suicidal person, especially compared to those who stopped watching. Now, before I go into my complete conclusion, I have to talk about one category that I didn't consider going into this video, the memes. Yeah, so when I asked a couple of people who hadn't seen much of the show what their thoughts of the show were, they were like, well, there were a lot of memes. I'm not really sure memes are quite the response you want when addressing a mental health concern. My brother said that he thought the show kind of made a joke of mental health. And if memes are the only thing you can remember about the show or its impact, that's a pretty big L. That said, I think we can all agree that memes pop up in really any situation now, no matter how tragic. Though I think in a way, humor can allow people to get through hard times. It just makes life easier. The following portion is by no means meant to minimize people's issues or laugh at someone's experience. I know this video has been pretty heavy, but let's try and lighten the mood with a So we've got a first format here. So you see, that's where the trouble began. That smile. That damn smile. I mean, this one's, this one's pretty funny. I mean, it, you got Joker in it. Uh, love Joker, I guess. Uh, next one. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, it's, it's, it's definitely something. It's, it's definitely Shrek. Okay. 
Uh, and then we got our, our last one. I, I, really, I really like this one because, uh, you know, it's a combination of uh, two different memes here. Um, you know, o- overall, uh, I mean, this meme is kind of funny at first glance, but uh, it, it gets a little repetitive, kind of boring after a while. So uh, uh, five and a half out of ten. All right. Next meme. Teacher. All right, class. That's it for today. And that one student's like, what about last night's homework? Me, welcome to your tape. Hannah, can I borrow a pencil? Uh, sorry, this is my last one. Welcome to your tape. Uh, I, I mean, I feel like these have a lot of potential, but from the the stuff I saw, there wasn't any that really like went above and beyond. Like this one here is like, oh, where's my last chicken nugget? <laughs> I ate them. Welcome to your tape. I, I, there's so many options for this meme. Like. Like, Reverse Flash should be going back in time, and he's seeing a young Barry enjoying his ice cream. And he just looks at him all angrily, like, Welcome to your tape, Barry. And he just shoves the ice cream up his face. It was me, Barry. Like, we gotta have memes like that here, alright? That would make this meme amazing. But, right now, it's just stupid stuff. So, uh, 7 out of 10 for potential. Next, meme. 13 Reasons Why. OMG BB, have you ever heard of a fidget spinner? So amazing. 14 reasons why. I mean, honestly, that that text just, it's terrible. Honestly, terrible. It, it, this is granted. All right. 13 reasons why. The Paul brothers were killed. 11 reasons why. I, I, honestly, I, I kind of vibe with it, guys. I, I, I kind of vibe with this format here. I, this is already two memes. I, I'm kind of vibing with this. Uh... There's a lot of numbers here. Um, 13 out of 10. Why not? It's a good format. This is the last one. I just thought it was funny. Season 2 is being renewed at Netflix. How are they going to have her commit suicide twice? <laughs> Dude, like, what the heck? <laughs> what the heck? Sorry. This one, this one cracks me up. All right. That's enough of that. Let's get back to the subject. One in five people suffer from a mental health crisis. That's why this video is brought to you by BetterHelp. Okay, okay, sorry, that was the last joke. I, I do not endorse BetterHelp by any means. Anyways, most studies that analyze data from objective sources suggest a worthier effect of the series. Higher suicide mortality, higher medical admissions for suicidal reasons, and a higher interest for suicide in the network after the release. In contrast, studies based on subjective reports describe higher suicidal ideation in vulnerable individuals, but also a possible papageno effect in general population. However, this theoretical anti-suicidal effect would be offset by the tangible pro-suicidal consequences that have been attributed to the show. Methodological limitations are not to be disdained and, therefore, no causal association can be established between the series and suicidality. Correlation does not mean causation. As an example, there's a good chance that the more cheese you eat, the higher your chances are of strangling yourself with bed sheets. Some people will take this to mean eating cheese will literally result in you accidentally strangling yourself in bed. But there's obviously no connection between how much of that tasty lactose you eat and getting spawn killed. I found it interesting that this study, which referenced numerous other studies, couldn't come to a solid conclusion on overall suicidality. What are my personal thoughts? Well, the studies I found seem to confirm what my experience was, that being a papageno effect among those unaffected, and even among some who were down a dark path, as Reddit indicated. In regard to the obvious Werther effect that happened, I I don't know if I place the blame on the show specifically. What I mean is that I believe the promotion of the show was pretty terrible. Not having warnings for disturbing scenes and marketing the show for a teen audience is not good, especially when no one knew how graphic the scenes would be. I also think showing Hannah's step-by-step process of ending herself is a net negative, made worse by the fact that Netflix was warned not to show that scene. But I think the show was able to start a widespread conversation about mental health, one I hadn't seen before the show. Shows like Bojack Horseman and Euphoria are widely popular for their portrayal of mental health. It's hard to know how popular these shows would be in a timeline where 13 Reasons Why doesn't exist, but I personally believe the success of 13 Reasons Why is, in part, why Bojack and Euphoria 
became so widely known. And in a way, I do think the show destigmatized mental health, even if its promotion was messy at best. I showed 13 reasons why to adults in the unaffected category to help them better understand these issues while avoiding those with suicidal ideation from viewing it. Now, I talked a bit about how the show helped me save some people, but there was one life I wasn't able to save. His name is Jack Shea. I want to dedicate this video to him. To be honest, I was never really close with Jack. He was more of a friend of a friend from high school. The reasons he left us aren't important. I'll just let Tim explain this one. This idea of control is important because suicide is often the ultimate manifestation of a deep sense of loss of control over your life and who you are. What psychologists would call losing your internal locus of control. For some people, suicide becomes an outlet because it is the only way in which they feel they are exerting control over their own life, making decisions that are their own, and a similar feeling is often associated with self-harm. This seemed to be the case with Jack. He no longer felt control in his situation, and it was too much for him to bear. Jack, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I wasn't able to be there for you. I'm sorry we weren't able to save you from the pain you were in. I hope that in God's endless mercy, you have been able to find the peace you were longing for. May the force be with you, Jack. 